And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Tom Kench Soraka. That's right, we're going to play two brand new champions, put them together. They look like they work very well together. Uh, we got Puppy here. She went to the, both Puppy and Harvey, they went to the uh, dog spa today. Harvey got a haircut and a bath and Puppy got a bath. And so she's got her Halloween uh, bandana on and... Uh, Looking good, and so we're gonna be playing on the Halloween board with this deck. Yeah, so we got Tom Kench Soraka. You've probably by now you've probably seen seen these cards already together. Uh, kind of go with my own little version of the deck here. Gonna play a couple Bayou Brunch. I've been pretty impressed with this card playing against this kind of deck because you know this is our fourth deck today. We've been playing against this deck a decent amount. I've been impressed with Bayou Brunch. We're gonna play a couple of those, um, but nothing else too. Uh, too serious. Like Star Spring is going to be our landmark that we're going to be trying to win the game with. So we need to be able to heal our own allies with this. We, we have to be able to damage our own allies because of that. So cards that uh, that have uh, your allies get damaged are going to be important, and that's what Bilgewater is doing in here. Of course, all of our early drops all deal damage themselves. The Lounging Lizard um, round start dealing damage. So turn after turn, it takes damage and can be rehealed. That's very important. And then same thing with Broadback Protector and Jack the Winner. They're both cards that can take damage each round and be able to reheal them. Um, all right, so let's play some some Tom Kench Soraka. So there's our Halloween board. We're gonna go play five games over in ranked. Let's see how we do. <laughs> Harvey's being a little jealous. Like whenever I stop petting her, you can see you can see her right here. There she is. Puppy's probably gonna just lay down. That's what she always does. Puppy doesn't like sitting up and she doesn't like looking at computer screens, I don't think. Okay, Bilge Water Noxus. So we're going to mulligan this. We're not gonna have time for that. I like both of our four mana cards. And our two mana card is fine, but not spectacular, but we probably need to keep it because it's a two mana card. But one health against Bilge Water Noxus. Not the ideal amount of health to have. All right, I'm gonna stop petting you, Harvey. Is that okay? Good girl. All right, just gonna pass. See what they do. Grenadier. So do we trade with Grenadier? If I do it right now, then that just deals. I'll I'll play this. That deals Nexus damage on this turn, which is not something that I want, as because then that goes towards leveling up Gangplank. I'm just gonna pass. Okay, I like that draw. Remember, we can Guiding Touch our box to post and make it a 3-3 if we want. But cool, so these two just trade like they were going to. But we're not taking the damage on our own turn. There's always room for supper. I need more powder kegs are so good. Well, powder keg make it rain, basically. Should make it rain be a three mana spell? I wonder if Make It Rain should be a 3 mana spell. It's doing 3 1 damage. It does feel like more like a 1 one mana spell. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite board. I like some of like the like the the boards with the different regions. I haven't been as impressed with like these specialty boards. Basically, I don't really like this this music they have for this Halloween board. I feel like they could have done better. You know, like Obviously you can't use, like they probably can't use just like the song, This is Halloween from, from that movie, from Nightmare Before Christmas. You know, like this is Halloween. Obviously not like the, the song, but even just the, the beat of like, bum, 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 bum. That would be like really cool to be able to have. They probably can't use that. You know, I don't know how much it would cost for them to be able to use that. 
but even just something kind of like that a little bit more upbeat -y of um you know like your like the bilge water tune very upbeat -y and you know like you kind of hum along to it this is just it's just too like quiet and puts you to sleep and that's what i've kind of found with a lot of like like these other boards they're kind of just like puts you to sleep music uh, anyway, sorry, I was kind of talking and not really doing anything here. I guess I'm gonna pass. Yeah, it's like the, even if even not using like the exact soundtrack because that's probably not something you're allowed to do. How it still probably do a little better than what they're doing. It's the exact same either way, like with blocking with these two. Appetizers of plenty. But do y'all kind of get that as well? Like, doesn't this just kind of seem like music to kind of fall asleep to? I just feel like, okay, yeah, so I could have ate Gangplank right there. I feel like if I eat Gangplank, I guess I should eat Gangplank, but I just feel like they're just going to kill my Tom Kench immediately. Two, five, we go down to one. I probably needed to though and just force them to have that. That last turn instead of playing the boxed puss. Yeah, there probably just wasn't a choice. Suppose that makes you the guts, right, big fella? Like a fish in water. <laughs> hey, Harvey. Very much. Explosives. I will admit. Appetizers of plenty. Two is not very much. Excuse my impertinence. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. This is kind of a, a learning game. I do. I would want to just kind of play this game all different. Let us I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. So what's in store for me, Neymar? I need time for commune, Tom. This you know. Okay, so back up to five. Because, yeah, I should have used an acquired taste on, on the other, like, the uh, powder keg before. And, yeah, I need to use that on Gangplank before. All that kind of stuff. So this is us going down to one.
One's not zero. One's not zero. Oh, right, sleep with the fishes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do better th this next game. Alright, that, that game is my bad. Suppose that makes you the guts, right, fella? Stop. GG's. Good lesson learned. Played way too safe. Alright. We're gonna go 4 1. I'm feeling it. Let's keep these two. I don't love keeping two three mana cards. I could see just mulliganing one of them. Because of that. I think, I think trading Box to Puss for Green Glade Caretaker is probably a good trade. It's not one that we have to make, though. What if we just get Starspring in play instead? I'm still good to no, we're going to play the Box to Puss. And wait. So if I go lo lounging lizard this turn, and the next turn double star spring. Shape the land and give it life. Everyone's got a secret. I hope I didn't need that. <laughs> so I'm not going straight to attacks because maybe we want to challenge with the box to puss. Unfortunate. Intruders. A gift from the river. By a block, I give them the opportunity to play like the barrier, to keep their thing alive, grow these green glade caretakers. Play Jack the Winner this turn. I'll defend these forests to the end. They have three mana. Are they gonna have a three I mana barrier? Stay at home, pal. Hopefully not. Single combat. That's pretty bad for me. These Bayou Brunches look pretty silly right now without having Tom Kench. They look very silly. If they didn't have that single combat, we were able to eat that. That would have been real big of, you know, healing another three. Right, like these would already be at ten. Without Tom Kench, Bayou, <laughs> Bayou Brunch looks pretty silly.
Okay, so if they have fight spells and they're gonna be fighting my Jack the Winner, I want them to do that before, you know, I'd rather them do that than my Tom Kench, I think. So I'm, I'm gonna just do this first. Give them the priority, see what they want to do. They're gonna have a, a million spells with their River Shaper. Fighting's a bloody business. You're covered. Nature blesses her followers. I need my own. Every step. Yeah, three monuments, but not Maybe much to. Not much to do with them. Ah, there's the man of the air. You always knew how to That single combat they had on my challenger, that was big. Where there's a will, there's a meal. Nature blesses her followers. All right, Bayou Brunch looked horrendous. <laughs> that card looked really unplayable. A lot of cards that did nothing. So that looked pretty. That looked pretty bad. That looked like a deck that would have lost everything. All right, so now we have Bayou Brunch plus Tom Kench together. So I like that. And even though we'll we'll kind of start off slow, they should be kind of slow too. We'll have our spell mana with our Bayou Brunch. Just keep all the spell mana. This world has such great I don't think I just play Fortune Croaker with doing nothing with it. I should be attacking for one. So that Soraka can get damaged? Uh, maybe not. No, we don't need to do that. I will find the goodness in you, River King. Hope only provides temporary sustenance, child. You are better than this. So my reason to do that block. The reason to do that block is that we could, you know, just attack with Soraka and reheal our ally completely. You know, like, reheal both of these completely. Halfway up to Soraka's level up. Time to enjoy the night sky. So ravenous flock is a problem. <laughs> Come on. I was going to say it's not too likely they have Ravenous Flock. Should not have said that. Alright, looks like we're going Landmark. Uh, 
But we have another Soraka. But it's just less that, you know, less for us healing. And I kinda I wanted to use that Soraka's wish to be able to heal a whole bunch. That was my plan. That's not gonna happen. Our mountain girls are full of dangers, but I know them all. I don't know, I don't you know, could definitely be play style, like I don't think I've been playing this perfectly or anything. I haven't really liked this kind of deck like the uh, like the Shivana Dragons. Like the Shivana Dragons was just much more my kind of deck than this. It's also probably more of a straightforward deck. And what we got here. This is the first time... Okay, it's not just ICU heal a damaged ally. Alright, so we're only at 6. We've got a long ways to go to get to that 22. We've got a long ways to go. Let me show you what I can do. You wanted rough. By the power of the stars. So I can have Soraka attack and fully heal this broad backed protector, which can be a lot of healing towards this twenty-two. In that case I probably want to do a little damage to the Soraka as well. Because it's gonna fully heal itself. Six, seven, eight. So it heals eight whenever it attacks. So that goes to seventeen. I mean, I might as well attack with this elusive. I don't know. They could have hush. I guess hush is a card. There's no reason to attack with that elusive. We're not winning through damage there. We're winning with our star shaping. Hey Logan. Um. Yeah, so we're, we're playing, there's three new champions, uh, Tom Kench and Soraka, which we're playing a combination of two of them. We've got a lot of new cards in this deck here. Um, Shivana is the other new champion, a dragon champion in Demacia, and I really like Shivana. Um, we we went 4-1 uh, with our dragon Shivana deck a little bit ago. I really like that one. Okay, so this is 17, this will be 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So this should just be 22. So if they don't have any damage here, that's just going to be game. Alright, I think that's game. That's 22. There we go. All right, looks like we got a mirror match. Okay. Tom Kench mirror is probably pretty weird. Probably pretty weird. Of course, I would like an earlier unit that, you know, be able to play. So maybe I'm just playing like Lounging Lizard on three and then on four, playing double Fortune Croaker. 
and then on five start playing Tom Kench, or the other way around for Tom Kench five double fortune broker. Okay, I'll just do this. Because I want to save the Lounging Lizard for us being able to uh, heal it consistently. Which, you know, we don't have something like that to necessarily do. So I could save my 2-2 with Guiding Touch, but it, it's a 2-2. It's not valuable. I'm gonna wait for Guiding Touch for cards that are valuable. Looking into the future, I see purple. Tell me, boy, wanna taste the old Pablo, do ya? Couldn't have summarized it better myself, child. It's always a consideration not to actually kill the Mentor of the Stones. get to do theirs first. I don't think, like, I don't think I have anything in my deck to save this, right? No, I have, oh, uh, Spell Shield. Okay, I have Spell Shield. I have three Bastions. There we go. We just hadn't seen, <coughs> um, hadn't seen a Bastion in any of these games. This is game number four, first time that we've seen that card. Kind of forgot about it. Pretty strange. Nope. Tom Kenchmir. They only have five cards. Rats, one of them was bashing though. Well, that's you know terrible because not only like you know I have a bashing now, but that's just not going to work because then they get priority again at the beginning of the next turn. So I have to just figure out another way to deal with this Tom Kench. You keep your distance there, Tommy boy. Uh, so that, that's probably game. All the lounging lizards. Yeah, just. So we have like Boxtopus challenge. I am shocked their box to post did not challenge my lounging lizard. Honestly shocked. Oh wait, wait, oh, they didn't have the attack token. Oh. Never mind. I don't know why for some reason I thought they just had the attack token that turn. Tell me, boy. Ugh. I'm 
All right, GG's. Oh, we have like the two cards that can destroy landmarks. No. Too many just just blandle units. That's all we had that game. That was better. And they're the landmark. All right, playing some dragons. None of these look good. So let's mulligan them all. All right, playing Bayou Brunch probably just isn't worth it. <laughs> it's it's looked terrible. So I guess it's just not worth playing. Play both of these this turn. Draw a card, get some healing started, play some defense. Turn this down. So, you know, get to put that on the Dragon Guard Lieutenant, make that thing a 5 4. This doesn't really make playing Broadback Protector very appealing. I am not a fan of this deck. I don't know. I just don't... I do not like these cards. <laughs> I just don't... I don't like how we have no removal besides Tom Kench. I think the playing these together just hasn't hasn't really worked out. Like, it, it feels like this has to be a... Sorry. Feels like this has to be either a Soraka deck or a Tom Kench deck, and we have to build around one champion and then have better interaction and things like that. Better interaction, better card draw, and just playing both champions. Because then, because we have to play the support cards for them, so we have both champions and the support cards for both of them, and then we just are not left with any uh, like good interaction and, and card draw and stuff like that. So honestly, not not a fan of this combination. It's kind of like playing. Maybe like Tarek and Lee Sin together, where just like playing just Lee Sin is kind of better, where like the Tarek takes up too much room, and like then, you know, playing support cards and everything just takes up too much room. I kind of feel like it's like that. So the thing about playing Jack the Winner is I'm not keeping Astral Protection for it. Or if I play the Broadback Protector, then we do have the Astral Protection for it. But Broadback Protector... Also just dies without killing the Dragon Guard Lieutenant. Like, if they're going to challenge the Jack, I at least want that thing to die. We were forged in dragon fire. Lock the duels! Alright, so the two times that we played... <laughs> the two times... Like, we went two... We went 4-1 with two decks. And we're gonna have a losing record with two decks, and the two decks we had with the losing record was with this Halloween board. I don't think that's a coincidence. Disappointed by this, I was so excited about this Halloween board, but this this music, I'm not, I'm just not digging this music at all. I make shepherding look easy. So don't really like any options we got. Like fall asleep music. Especially how they're taking so long. Alright, finally. Thank you. Alright, now this thing took some damage, so it'll be able to be healed again.
If they would have done like the 7 4 challenging my 2 7, we would have used the protection for it. We get us a little bit of card draw. A new journey. If you wanted a little too far, kid. You're going just gonna go loun lounging lizard. That lets me keep the astral protection available. Uh, no, right now we're at seven. So if I attack here, that's healing um, five. All right, big Alfredo. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good one. Some more fearsome blockers. Right on. Light. Gem over there. So they're not going to kill Soraka? Gonna not kill Soraka. Take heart. Live with purpose. Oh. I wish I could save something with this Bastion. Alright, so eleven. They, they could have dealt an extra point of damage, they would have switched those. They probably don't have single combat, right? Like, if they had single combat, they, they would have played it probably any of these other turns. Probably don't. Sweet. Geez. It was the turn before this one where they just didn't really do much attacking. That was the turn that my opponent really needed to be more aggressive. Even though I was kind of... I was kind of complaining there during that game, but uh, you know, with with having a card like that, that with having the, like that landmark out, they really need to play that more aggressive. Yeah, so there we go. There's a there's a Star Spring finish. Uh, just heal up that Soraka a ton, you know, with Soraka's wish, and get that get that win. All right, uh, there's Tom Kent Soraka. Like I said, just not not a deck I was really impressed with to be honest both so both of our wins were star spring wins uh that landmark is definitely the real thing and I, I kind of feel like that's what this deck is like with Soraka and, and astral protection and this kind of stuff that you should just kind of be a star star spring deck it didn't feel like we should be a Tom Kench deck the the games that I was like focused on Tom Kench and trying to do the Tom Kench stuff were not nearly as good and like our opponent could interact with Tom Kench and things like that uh so I, I don't I don't really like the combination of these two basically I think you need to be more focused on Sor Soraka and Starspring, or uh, you know go you know go like Tom Kench with like Frel Yord or just like other like play Tom Kench with a lot more protection and like removal and stuff like that 
or play you know a lot more life gain and and uh, healing and Soraka with Star Spring. I think both of those are are definitely just fine. And like you know, I think those are those are good archetypes and good ways to build. But I was very disappointed with the two of them together. I just don't think, even though they look like they have some synergies, I don't think that that's really where we want to be. So good conclusions. You know, got to play the cards and uh, see. Because, you know, just just looking at them, it looks like that they would work really well together. But playing it, um, it's just too, it's too, uh, it pulls you in too many different, you know, pulls you in different, different directions. And your deck's just kind of a little disjointed and just not as good as it needs to be. All right, for those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Let me know what you think of that kind of conclusion like I had here. And anything else you want to see, you know, like what other kind of uh, decks do you want to see with all these new cards? Leave those comments. Give me those ideas, and I'll build them, and I'll play them. All right, but thank you so much for watching some Tom Kench Soraka, and I'll see you for the next video.